Hey, it's Rachel here from Offroad CC, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a brand new bike from Specialized that I've had a chance to review ahead of the embargo. So let's get to it. This is the new Specialized Status. It's a long travel mullet bike designed just to be run with that 29er front wheel and a 650B wheel at the rear. And if you think you've heard that name before, then you're right. The Specialized Status has been around before. In fact, there's photos of our editor John on the internet riding the old Status back in 2014. Back then though, it wasn't a mullet bike. That job was left to the big hit, which ran a 26 inch wheel at the front and a 24 inch wheel at the rear. Six years ago, the Status was much like this younger sibling though. It was an affordable, hard hitting bike. Back then it had a 200 mil fork and 170 mil travel at the rear, meaning it was much more akin to the brand's downhill bike, the Demo, but with a more free ridey feel. These days, the Status keeps its loose party bike theme, but with a more enduro shaped package. It's got 160mm of travel, it's long, it's slack, and it pedals half decently too. Interestingly, Spesh chose to leak this bike out on social media ahead of the launch, so you might have seen it using a hashtag status. They got their more free ride sort of style ambassadors to pose with the bike, and it gave us a flavour of what was to come that was new from Specialized. The other interesting thing about this bike, there's absolutely no Specialized decals on it whatsoever, apart from the head tube logo. Specialized say they wanted to make the status bikes attainable for a wide group of younger core mountain bike riders. They said they wanted the bikes not only to ride the way that they want and need them to, but also to look the way they want. So they said the person's bike says a lot about who they are and they wanted that those riders that they're attracting to have a blank slate to say what they want and how they want to say it. So they reckoned solid colors and minimal branding was the way to go. Make of that what you will, but part of me feels that Specialized are saying that they want to attract a new audience that might not necessarily see their brand as cool, but want to get on the bikes without their street cred being wrecked. Whatever it is, I'd ride this bike whether it had Special written on it or not. A bit like the Stumpy Evo, this status is relatively cheap and well specced, and there's just one model to choose from. The new status costs £2,399 and comes in two colours, the grey you see here and a maroon. For your dollar you get an alloy frame, it's still an FSR link just on a simple looking frame and of course it has that 29er wheel up front and 650B at the rear. There's no frills here, there's no bottle cage, there's no swap tools and there's not one of those amazing chain slap silencers but it is a burly bike if you want one for not much cash and things are looking pretty good so far. The suspension is dealt with by way of a Fox Foat 36 rhythm fork, that's the entry level 36 fork and a Fox Foat DPX2 performance shock. Both of these perform well. The shock is a little wallowy in the mid stroke meaning that it feels a little vague when pumping mid corner but that's my only real gripe. To get the bike going, there's a full SRAM NX Eagle drivetrain with a dub threaded bottom bracket and SRAM Kodar brakes. So that's the downhill orientated brakes with larger calipers for more power than you might find on the guide range of trail brakes. There's also a 170mm Extrusion Manic dropper post and that's a post that if I was buying one on its own, I'd definitely opt for. They're super reliable and they have a really nice smooth action. Elsewhere, the bike gets its fair share of money-saving parts with Roval wheels, unbranded hubs, uh, specialised bars, stem, saddle, and specialised Butcher Grid Trail 2.3 tyres. The tyres are a little disappointing. They're flimsier than I'd expect for such a hard-hitting bike, and also a bit on the narrow side. The Eagle Eye and Manu might notice that I've swapped tyres. I've fitted Cushcore to the rear for better flat protection and better damping with that um, Grid Trail tyre and I've fitted a WTB Vigilante at the front. It's a tyre that gives better grip in changeable conditions and on off cambers than the 2.3 Butcher. So now if you're taking a look at this bike and thinking it looks like a cheap man's or woman's enduro, then you'd be wrong. It's very different. 
Okay, yeah, it's about a slack and they pedal sim similarly, but descending is where they are very different. If you've tried a mullet bike before now, it'll probably have likely been either by putting a 29er fork and a wheel in a 650B bike, or the opposite, by putting a 650B wheel in a 29er bike. Both of which will have negative effects on the geometry, raising or lowering the bottom bracket, and with other knock-on issues such as changing the head angle or seat angle, which then changes the handling of the bike significantly. Safe to say, I was keen to have a ride on this bike with a specific purpose-built mullet setup. So, mullet setup makes the cornering on the status very different. It's totally different dynamic. The best way I can describe this is that when I ride 29-29, I feel like the bike's harder to lean over. I feel like there's a magnet on the outside of the corner trying to pull me and the bike upright and stop me leaning. I don't get that with the mullet setup. It leans and drops into corners easier, which I prefer for both steeper turns with catch berms and also flat corners too. And ultimately, it makes me faster. The other thing I notice about a mullet setup is just how much a 650B wheel hangs up on bumps compared to a 29er. Now, I can't compare this to the Enduro that I've also ridden, as the state of suspension is obviously quite different, but I have recently been swapping a 650B wheel with a 29er on my Specialized Levo SL that I'm riding. And when you swap them back to back, you find that the 650B doesn't roll as well and you kind of get the feeling that the front wheel goes some way to smooth out the bumps and then the back wheel chatters over the same ground. It's odd, but it's easy to get used to and you take the pros with the cons. In geometry terms, the status is similar but then different to the Enduro. It is slack at 63.7 degrees in the high position um, and it has a relatively steep 76 degree effective seat tube angle and this S3 size has a reach of 462 mil. Now, a lot of you might be thinking that's a hell of a lot of bike for what looks ra like rather a short rider, but the S2 has a reach of 437 mil, which is kind of short, and the short seat tubes across the range here have allowed me to size up, which I really like. When riding, for the most part, the Stasis is a confidence-inspiring and great fun ride. It's slack, so it provides you with many of those get-out-of-jail-free cards, and in the high position, um, that has a flip chip on the shock like a load of other specialised bikes. So in that high position, it's fairly nimble too. I found the low position left the bike feeling a bit lacklustre. So it swapped it over to high, raised the bottom bracket a bit, and that took that bottom bracket from very low to just reasonably low. Specialised have got most things pretty dialed on the status. It's not super heavy. It's got loads of good kit for the money. It climbs pretty well and geometry is mostly on point. So I do have some niggles over the short chain stays though. At 426 mil, they're super short and you can really feel it when you ride. So those chain stays are short comparatively to the long front center of this bike. So that means then rather than settling me or settling the rider in the middle of the bike, it means that it gave me a real rearward bias and I found it a little hard to maintain a forward position on the bike and really weight the front. It is manageable, but I do find myself fighting to get there and stay there. And consequently, the ride feels a little unbalanced and a little twitchy, especially if you're on steep, fast straights or you're going across off camber at speed. Saying that though, the status is really fun and has become my daily ride. I'm really enjoying the mullet setup and I've just got some tweaks I want to make just because I love fettling with bikes and experimenting with stuff. So I've got some 165mm cranks, so 5mm shorter than these are going to go on, and then a new mech, which will hopefully silence some of the chain slap noises coming from this SRAM NX one. I'd say if you're in the market for a hard-hitting enduro bike that has a little bit of the jib life character, and you want a mullet, or you're at least interested in trying one without breaking the bank, then the status would be a good one to look at. It's got geometry specifically set up for the purpose and it is well worth a look in the long travel bike category. It's not that expensive for rather a lot of bike that is both upgradable and as I've said, a lot of fun. So if you wanna read a full review of this bike, head over to www.off.road.cc and it'll be on the homepage there. If you're interested in more bike reviews on video, or if you're interested in our video roundups, so our latest one is seven of the best bikes for under £3,000, then head over to our YouTube homepage and hit subscribe so you can find us more easily. Of course, if you've got one of these or you're thinking of buying one, 
or you've got something similar or you want to tell me about your mullet setup, then stick the comments below so we can see what you're up to. So thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you again next time.